Good afternoon. This is LaWanda Dates, and I am the senior project manager here at Jenny May. I just want to say uh, welcome and happy new year. And thank you for joining us for the multifamily pool delivery module enhancements training for January 2021. Um, I just wanted to let you know that um, we have started this application. Um, I think it's been well over two years now and made some major enhancements. Uh, this particular release, we're working on two enhancements. One is a pre-approval, which will include uh, approval for basis points, as well as approval for cross-reference and cross-default, as well as approval for additional items. Next, we also have the enhancement to the account executives um, issuer view for them. That's an internal enhancement to this application for the account executives. So. Again, we just want to walk you through the enhancements that we plan on releasing later this month, which we look to have available to you uh, no later than Monday, January 25th. Um, at this time, before I pass it on to Jeff, Philip, is there anything you want to say in addition? Thank you, Luana. I just wanted to, to thank everybody uh, for your time today in the Bank of New York for hosting uh, this training, while Ginny May employees have not been physically back into the office uh, for over 10 months now, I uh, just wanted to let everyone know we've been busy, um, record volumes, and uh, the team's been processing commitment authority requests as fast as we can, uh, all the while trying to deliver and enhance our uh, technology packages that we have available to you. So, uh, having said that, thanks very much. Hopefully, everyone's uh, safe and healthy and let's look forward to a good 2021 thanks thank you philip um and before i pass it to jeff i do want to let you know that this call will be recorded and also we will have uh, various opportunities for you guys to ask questions throughout the training as well at this time i'd like to pass it over to jeff jeff thank you lawanda uh hopefully you folks can hear me my name is Jeff Janowski. I am with the Bank of New York Mellon, and uh, I was with the MFPDM project whenever it was originally developed. So I have pretty good knowledge of the application. Today, what we would like to cover for you includes a refresher of manually adding pools, loans, and draws. We'll continue that with the showing the differences for an LM pool type. Uh, next, we will take a look at non-level payment section of a loan and last from my portion will be discussing how to generate reports in the multiple different ways that we can do so once we are finished with that we will pause and ask for questions and once we are through with the questions there i will turn it over to tohid ali who is uh one of my colleagues here at the bank and he will discuss the pre-approval requests and the three different types and uh, a few other topics as well. So with that being said, I would like to get started into uh, doing a brief demo of entering a construction loan draw, be it the first draw for that particular pool. So, so he let's take us into MFPDM. Just want to remind everyone that this is a testing environment, so there may be some discrepancies here and there with what we see. Please do not be alarmed. Uh, this is the test environment. So, With that being said, hopefully most of you are familiar with MFPDM. I will go briefly over how to enter a construction loan pool. At the top of the screen for MFPDM on the pools and loans page, we have the blue bar that follows us no matter where we go. On the right hand side, there is an add pools button that we can select. And it brings us to a pop up where you have the option to import pool data via file or to enter pool data manually. So for our case today, we will be entering a pool manually. And as this loads, we will see the pool details screen, which is our starting point. We have the pool header at the top, which we can see is somewhat filled out with information at this point in time, as we continue to progress and follow more fields uh, on the forms that 
blue bar will be populated with the associated values. Let's start out with the header information section where we'll go ahead and enter our pool number. And just a note, Tohit is the one controlling the screen right now. So if I refer to him, that is, uh, that's what's going on. So Tohit is typing in the pool number right now. This pool number is uh, kept for the issuer that is being used right now, and you cannot use a different pool number. Yep, uh, so it is associated with the issuer number. Continuing on, we have the issue date, which we will select. And as we know, it can either be the current month or current month plus one. So it is January or February, selecting January. Next, we have the issue type, which is pre-selected as multifamily, that is a static field for all multifamily pools. Continuing on down, we have the pool type where we will go ahead and select CL construction loan as we want to enter our draws. And finally on this line, we have the submission type which has been filtered down based on the pool type selected. As you may see in MFPDM, many of the fields get filtered down based on previous selections. Do this, try and make it nice and easy for the end user to select only the values that are applicable to this particular pool. So we will go ahead and select the initial construction loan. And before I move to the general information section, I do want to point out, you will notice some of the fields have an asterisk next to the name. This indicates a field that is required in order to save a pool into the system. This does not necessarily indicate all of the fields that are required to submit for final certification. So please keep that in mind as you move through MFPDM. Continuing to the general information section, we will start by entering the pool tax ID. And while Tawheed is entering this information, I will go ahead and touch upon the next field, the initial pay date. As we can see, it has already been populated based on the issue date selected in the category above. Next, we will enter our delivery date. And if you are familiar with MFPDM, you know that you have the ability to select the date from the calendar pick or you have the ability to enter a date manually using your keyboard. Thank you. Uh, the unpaid balance date is once again, pre-populated based on previous selection, the issue date. And finally, on this line, we have the amortization method, which is concurrent date CD. Once again, this is a pre-populated field that is static. Moving down to the rates box, we start out with the security interest rate. And we will note that the mortgage interest rate and servicing fee do not have fields to fill in here. Uh, the mortgage interest rate is completed on the loan details page and the servicing fee will be automatically calculated based upon the mortgage interest rate being entered. So next thing, Next that we need to fill out is the PLPN security rate. And finally, for the general information section, we will enter the maturity date of this pool. And once we are finished with the maturity date, we can scroll down to the pre-approvals section, starting out with the pre-approval for basis point spread, one for cross default, cross reference, and finally one for balloon payment. These are all defaulted to no with their radio buttons. Uh, in order to select, or in order to fill out the additional information, you would select yes. We have an entire section coming up after I'm done speaking where Tohid will discuss these more in detail. So for right now and for our demonstration purposes, we will leave these all selected as no. And as Tohid can demonstrate, uh, just as a reminder for system use, you do have the ability to minimize any of the sections that you do not want to see as you move through the forms. We come to the next section, which is our master agreements. Starting out with our custodian number and name, 
this field is populated by, based on what is in your MAMS agreements. Next, if you should have a subservicer for this pool, uh, you would be able to select them from the list. But as we do not have one, we will continue on to the principal and interest account, starting out with the ABA, Federal Routing Number. This is something that you can select from the dropdown. And based on the selection for the ABA number, the account number displayed will be filtered down. Thank you. Moving on down to the escrow accounts, we have a blue button that says add. So let's go ahead and add an escrow account, please. And here we can see just like with the P&I amount, it is pre-filled out where we can go ahead and select the ABA number. And once again, the account number is filtered down based on the ABA number selected. Next, we'll move to the subscriber section where we have that blue add button again, and we would like to add a subscriber here. So here the drop-down value is almost the same where we have a pre-selected value. We also have the ability to add a new subscriber directly from the form. If you choose the add new option, you do have the ability to save the value to your maintenance so that it can be used at a later point in time. Or you do have the ability to enter the information here and populate it as a one-time value. For our case, we will go ahead and select the first value. Next section, or next field, excuse me, is the description. Should you have a description to go along with this subscriber, you would enter it here. But we will go ahead and skip to the position, which we will enter. And as you note, should you have multiple subscribers, the add button can be used to add additional rows where you would enter your other subscriber position. The totals would be totaled down below so that it would add up accordingly. In our case, we don't want to have another subscriber, so we will go ahead and select the trash can at the end of the row to remove that particular row. Our next section is the 11711B, the certification and agreement form. And for our demonstration purposes today, we will be selecting the second option. Finally, on the pool details page, we do have pool statistics, including the total amounts. So this will list the P&I payment amounts, UPB amount, and then we have two sections for, one for FHA and one for USDA rural development totals listing both the quantity and the UPB amounts of the loans that match those categories. Finally, in the pool statistics, we have additional information listed as the weighted average interest rate, which we would be populated based on the loans entered. With that being said, we are done with the pool details page, so we can go ahead and scroll back up to the top. And as we can notice, we can see some of the information has been populated in the blue bar that we have already entered. So next step up, we'll go ahead and select the save button in the blue bar. And we will receive notification that our pool has been saved successfully. And a reminder that in order to proceed with submission, you will need to validate the pool. Upon refresh of the screen, we will see another tab added, which is the Loans tab. So we'll go ahead and select that tab. And this will take us to a list of loans associated with this pool. As we are entering it for the first time, there are none listed. But we would like to add one for this particular pool. So we will select the Add Loans button on the right-hand side, which will bring us to the Loan Details page. As we can see, that blue bar follows us no matter where we are. Thank you, Tohid. Uh, so we will start out like we had on the pool details. We do have another general information section where we, will, where we will start by entering our issuer loan number. And just as a reminder, there are many, many fields that do automatic uh, validation, the issuer loan number is one of them. 
So if you do receive a red box around it, uh, you will need to update that field in order to move on. Continuing down, we have our mortgage type being either FHA or USDA. In our case, we will select FHA, and then we will enter our mortgage interest rate. Should this be a balloon payment in the next section, you would select yes and enter the details. But once again, for our demo purposes today, we will leave it selected as no and continue on to the mortgage amounts box. Starting with the original principal balance that we will enter, followed by the unpaid balance. And finally, in this box, we will complete the principal and interest. Next, we will enter our years or our term of mortgages and years. You do have the ability to enter months as well. However, based on the asterisk indicated, uh, only the years is required. Months is an optional field, so we will leave it blank. Next, we will select our first pay date. Thank you. And we will enter our last pay date as well. Excellent. Moving to our next box, we have the mortgage note dates, starting with the loan origination date. And as we can see, this is a good example that the calendar shown displays only those dates. Yeah, you're going to have to close that one out, Tohi, or bring up the next one. The calendar shows only those dates that are applicable to be selected. Excellent. The next category is our prepayment provisions. Uh, if you would have a lockout information, prepayment premium period, uh, or description, you would go ahead and enter it here. Once again, as it is demo, we will select no and continue on. Likewise, with the indicators, whether you had a min or a mom indicator for this particular loan, you would be able to enter them here. But we will continue on to the agency details, starting out with our FHA slash USDA case number. Thank you. And next, we'll select the loan type code. Again, this is going to be filtered based on the mortgage type selected above. So we have FHA multifamily as our loan type code. And finally, for the agency details, we'll select the section of, act, of the act that applies to this loan. Should there be development costs associated with it, we would have that displayed in the next box. Continuing down, we have the debt service coverage ratio and loan to value ratios, should those be populated at a later point in time once all information is entered, but we will skip those. We will talk about the annex special disclosures. So we have an identifier field, which we can click into, and we will see a list of values. If we go ahead and select one of those values for our demo here, we can see that it populates the full description. The next section is the non-level payment provisions, which functions in the same manner as the annex special disclosures. And please note that at the bottom, we do have an add new option. Should you want to enter a brand new non-level payment provision just for this loan? And like I had mentioned for the subscriber information as well, there's also a section to save the value to maintenance should you want to select it at a later point in time as well. In our case, we'll select one of the pre-populated values and we will continue to scroll to the bottom where we will enter our mortgager information section, information, excuse me. Uh, we'll skip over the non-level payment schedule as that will be one of the next items that we will discuss and I will go into more detail there. So Tohid, please enter the name of the mortgager. Okay. 
followed by the property site address. We'll enter our city name, select a state from the drop down, and finally enter our zip code. And before Toheed scrolls back up to the top, another pointer for MFPDM. We will see that the blue bar remains at the top of the screen, and we can see that we do have some options there, including the docs selection as well as save. MFP, in MFPDM, no matter where you are on the screen, that blue bar follows you, and it gives you the applicable actions at that point in time. So for our case, we will go ahead and select the save option, and we will yet again see a notification that loan has been saved successfully and we must validate the pool in order to submit for final certification. Upon refresh, just as we did whenever we saved the pool details, now we have another tab for the draw history details. So we want to enter our first draw information. So we'll select the draw history details tab. And whenever the screen refreshes, we will see all of the information related to the draw history. There's very little information to actually enter on this, keeping it as nice and simple as possible. Most things are pre-populated for you, starting out with the draw number, the draw issue date, the advance number, and the first field that we will input will be the approved advance amount. Next to the advance amount, we have the cumulative approved amount, followed by our next item to enter is the requested amount for this draw. The next column is the cumulative requested amount, should it differ, followed by the remaining advance amount. If there is a difference between the approved advance amount and the requested amount, the remaining advance column will show that. Finally, on this line, we do have a status indicating that this particular draw is in draft status. Should you have multiple advances for an individual draw, you would go ahead and select the add advance, which will add a new row with a advance number of two. But in our case, we do not have another advance to Enter, so we will select the trash can button once again on the right hand side to remove that row. The last three fields on the screen show the approved amount to date, the cumulative requested amount, followed by the mortgage amount. We have now entered all of the information for our draw history or for our initial draw, so we will scroll back up to the top. Take a look, yep, and select the save button. Wanna make sure that, that is saved into the system. And if, whoop, as the screen refreshes here, we'll take a look at one more item in the blue bar prior to validating our pool. So the third category down on the left-hand side lists the business rules, which we can now see are not yet run and our pool is in draft status next to the pool number. So we would like to update these fields by validating the information that we have entered for our pool details, loan details, as well as for our draw. So we will select the validate button from the top right hand side. We will receive that the notice that the pool has been submit, successfully submitted for validation we can see at the top of the screen that the pool has been locked for editing. MFPDM works by locking the pool so that you can go and perform any other action within the system should you so choose so. As we saw, an indicator pop up in our notification that the pool had been validated successfully. Yeah, there it is at the top. This one came up quickly. So we can go ahead and view that and see what that pool number was if we want to go directly to that pool should you have exited out. So once this loads, 
we can see that the pool has passed the business rules now, which was updated. And we have the ability to submit this pool for final certification. So Tohid will go ahead and select the submit button. And we'll receive a confirmation for submission, starting out with the certification, which you have to check, confirm the pool number that you're submitting for final certification, select continue. And here we will enter our secure ID information, including the PIN and secure ID. Please note this is for the authorized signers. And we'll select the submit button, receive notification that our pool is being processed. And once again, we'll see that the pool is locked for editing. We'll take a moment, once again, the pool remains locked for editing so that you can do other actions should you so choose. But as we saw the notification come in that it has been refreshed, we'll go ahead and manually refresh the pool using the refresh button. And we will notice at the top of the blue bar the updated pool status. Located next to the pool number, we can now see that the pool has been submitted for final certification. That will take care of the submission of the initial construction loan draw. So next, we'll go back to the pools and loans page and we'll look for an LM pool that we can use to discuss the non-level payment section, as well as the loan history. So Tohid has typed in a pool number, we'll select it. It will open with the pool details page. As we want to take a look at information on the loan details, we will select the loans tab. Followed by selecting the loan populated in the all loans table, which will open the details for that particular loan. And as we can see with this loan details, as it is an LM pool, we will have additional information displayed starting out. Yep, we can scroll on down to the uh, not a non-level payment schedule. So this one is obviously a pool that has already been entered into our system. So we're using this at display only. Here we can see that we have one entry for a payment change date with a security rate and interest rate associated with it. And likewise, we have the P&I amount associated with that particular non-level payment schedule entry. This is a future item for those that may not be aware that will modify the payment on in 2027, excuse me. The next section down, we do have our modified loan history starting out with the ish entry number, followed by the P&I, the original principal balance, the unpaid balance, the first pay date, the last pay date, and finally, the interest rate. As we can see, we had two changes and two entries for this information, and these are past dates that would have occurred outside of the application, which we are now entering whenever we bring the pool into MFPDM. Just as we see for the modified loan history, the non-level payment schedule does allow for multiple entries as well. Uh, one final note that I wanted to touch upon for the modified loan history, the information entered there will supersede the information entered above in the loan details as the information will be taken directly from the modified loan history and populate the information on the loan details so that there is no discrepancy. That will conclude my overview of the non-level payment schedule and modified loan history. And finally, we will take a look at the reports and forms that you are able to view. So he just scrolled back up to the top where we have our docs button. Upon selecting the docs button, we will see the reports and forms that are associated with this particular pool. If we select one of those, such as the 11705, 
the system will automatically download the form. As we can see on the bottom left-hand side, we will go ahead and select it to open the PDF. The information has been pre-populated based on what is in the system. And you can go ahead and close that out. So that is one way to access the documents that are associated with this particular pool. The alternative is to go back to the pools and loans page, where we will see the second option for accessing this information. So if you don't wanna go into an individual pool and take a look at any of the documents on the right-hand side of the rows here, we do have an ellipsis. Selecting the ellipsis brings you to the same value or the same actions that are available within the pool where you would be able to select from a drop down. Please note that these documents that are available are dependent upon the pool type as well as the status of the pool. So you may or may not see certain documents depending upon those items for a particular pool. At this point in time, that concludes everything that I wanted to discuss. So I will pause and we can take a look at our schedule again, where we come to a question and answer session about anything that I have discussed. So if you do have a question about something that was reviewed, please let me know. Wait a few seconds. Yeah, this is uh, Justin from Capital One. I did have a quick question. Please. So on the loan record for a CL, um, we have our first CL that we're entering through MFPDM and uh, ran into some issues with the first pay date for the loan. Um, I, I assume both your training material and what you've entered here is not actually validated against system rules because we weren't sure whether to put the first pay date of the CL or the first amortizing pay date. We ended up putting the first amortizing pay date because that's the only thing the system would accept. I was just hoping you could confirm that for me as a business rule that's in place. I will defer that question. I believe I know the answer, but I will defer that to uh, an expert in the MFPDM business rules. Folks, just a, a second. Um, hey, Jeff, this is Dana. Um, sorry, who asked the question? I just want to document that. It's uh, Justin from Capital One. Okay. Thanks, Justin. So first of all, just one small thing. We are validating against the same business rules and the same what you call Gini net edits. It's the same even in the test environment. Um, otherwise, we couldn't have submitted that CL or CS pool they were working on. But uh, we will defer um, Philip or uh, Vicky if you guys want to take this. If not, Jeff will answer, and we can also send it in writing to make sure because we don't want any confusion. So we would definitely also send you an email confirming. Okay. That's great. Thanks. Yep. Hi, it's Vicky. Uh, yep. I think what we really need to see is the scenario that you're entering into the system to see what the system is pulling. Um, it will be helpful if you sent us a copy or even screen prints. Um, give us the pool information so we can go in and take a look at it. Um, you can send that information to the help desk and uh, you can put on their attention, Vicky, so the team will know to send it off to me. Okay, yeah, I can uh, take a screenshot of what we ended up submitting. Um, I, I can't get the error message because uh, we've already submitted the pool, um, but I will show you what we put in. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Justin. We'll make sure that we yeah. we get back to you also on what the rule is exactly, and then we can okay. look at your specific tool. Thank you. Great, thank you. Do we have any additional questions regarding what was reviewed? And we'll give you guys a minute if you want to think about it. <laughs> um, all right, and, and if there are no questions, uh, yeah. uh, sorry, did someone else want have a question? Okay, so if there, I, I, oh, if there are none, I would like to take a pause. Uh, Jenny May, Luanda, I know you wanna give us a little kickoff for the next section. 
if you're right. ready. Yes, I'm ready. Oh, somebody and, had a and, question. We got a question. Okay. Go ahead. Hi. This, this is Pavna Patel from CBRE. Um, I have a question about the prepayment penalty uh, information. Is it covered under this section or will it be co uh, covered under like next section? Because uh, Sometimes we have prepayment penalty, um, not full years, but let's say nine years and six months, and I always get an error message. So, because it doesn't let me enter months, uh, so. Um, that is not. I don't think that that's covered in this training. Can, sorry, who's going to respond? Uh, this is Jeff. So. That section is not specifically covered in this training session. This training session okay. is more to introduce the new features that we are displaying. Um, I can refer you to the MFPDM user guide, or if you have additional questions, as Vicki had mentioned previously, you can reach out to the help desk, send them an email of any issues that you may be having, and they can address those issues directly. I, I understand, definitely. Thank you. I, and put I, attention, second. Vicky, if you don't mind, so she knows that this is coming in from the training. Yeah, I, I second that. By the way, this is Justin from Capital One again. I mean, it what I guess is unclear is whether it should be years or months. And oftentimes on a CL, we will have a period of, um, you know, maybe a year and a half before amortization begins, where the prepay would kick in. So it's there's no way to trick the system, um, if you will, to put year and months. Um, like you can't put a decimal point, so maybe I'll follow up in writing as well. Yeah, that would be good. And I think we need to take a look at the system and see what the business rule is and if if it's something that we have to um, do more analysis on. So it would be good if you send the email. Thank you. So a couple of really good questions and we wanna make sure that we respond to them um, with all the information. Um, is there anyone else who has a question? Okay, thank you, Dana. I can take it from here. Um, again, this is LaWanda Date, and thank you, Jeff, for that refresher for the um, MFPDM application, and thank you all for your questions. So before we go into the second half, I did just want to highlight some of the features and the types of pre-approvals that we're going to offer in this new upcoming release. Uh, first, we're going to have pools with a basis point spread that is outside of our allowable range. And we're also going to have pools with shared case numbers for both FHA USDA loans uh, considered cross default cross reference. And third, we're going to offer pools that are marked as balloon payments. In addition to the type of um, pre approval types, the features that we're going to offer with this release will involve requests and approvals completed and tracked online via the application itself. We're going to offer also instant notification to the account executives as well as the issuers. We're going to have a single point of reference for all requests and approvals going forward. And last, we're going to have waiver letters that will be automatically generated once approvals are received and can be accessible at any time. So um, some of that will be highlighted in this training. And at this point, I would like to pass it on to Toheed. Well, he'll share with you the highlights of the pre-approvals along with the new features. Tohi? Okay. Thank you, Rwanda. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tohi Ali. <clears throat> I'm the uh, UAT test manager at Bank of New York Mellon. And today I'll go over that new uh, pre-approval feature that Rwanda just talked about, um, which is a new addition to MFPDM. So as you all know, Currently, for the basis point spread, the balloon payment, um, and or the cross default cross reference uh, pools, you would need a manual pre approval by your account executive. Well, now we made it uh, a little bit easier for your workflow, um, and now you can request those pre approvals straight through MSPDM. Um, and for today's demonstration purposes, I've already created a pool. Uh, to show you guys um, that requires pre-approval. So I'll first go ahead and search for that pool. Okay, 
So now we have that on the uh, search uh, area. Also, before I go ahead and go into more detail, I would like to add that we did include and add uh, the ability to search for pre-approval type, pre-approval status, as well as search by a case number. So these are three new addition in our filter, our advanced filter. So then first I'll go ahead and uh, go into the pool detail. Okay, so while the system loads, just to uh, speak ahead, um, earlier Jeff had shown a small section of it uh, for pre-approval, so I'll go ahead and show that now. So here you can see there are three sections for pre-approval. We have the uh, pre-approval for basis point spread, pre-approval for cross-default, cross-reference pools, uh, and finally, pre-approval for balloon payments. Now, please note this is um, defaulted to no, so you can continue building out your pool without having pre-approval in your way if you don't require it. Uh, but for today, um, as you can see, this pool does require pre-approval for balloon payments and the basis point spread. So first thing I'll do is go ahead and click on the edit button. And while I do, you can see that the fields are now, uh, the radio buttons are clickable. So for today's demo, the first thing I'll do is click yes for basis point spread. Now, please note that when a pool um, falls outside the allowed uh, threshold system will require it and here you can see that it is giving us the spread that is um, exceeding the allowable limits. So we have the request date after that which is the current date and you have the request approval by date. This is the date you will give your account executive to reply and respond by. And also please note that the date that you enter here must be um, before the settlement date. Um, in our case, our, um, our delivery date is 122. So if I were to select a future date, for example, the 26th, you can see we get a error message that says cannot be greater than the delivery date. So I'll go ahead and fix that to adjust. And the next field we have is the project name. Um, we'll have to enter the name of the project. And please note, there is an asterisk next to it, which is required for you to save this pool. Okay. Next, you have the upload document section. Here, you have the ability to upload a document uh, to send with your pre-approval to your AE. And please note, this is a, a document that you would manually send uh, to your AE for review um, or fax. Um, in this case, now we made it a little bit easier and incorporated that upload option into pre-approval. And to do, um, to do so, to upload a document, you'll go ahead and click Browse select the document that you wish to uh, send, click open and upload. And you get a, a confirmation that the pool is uploaded. And finally, you have the request reason. Um, so we'll go ahead and enter something here. Okay. Next, we have the pre-approval for cross-default and cross-reference. We want to cross-default a pool, um, so we'll go ahead and click yes. Now, please note for cross-default, it requires a waiver letter, and if it's a cross-reference, which we can also do here, uh, it does not require a waiver letter. Now, um, one thing to add, um, you can cross-default uh, new pools um, as well as existing pools um, in MFPDM as well as GenuNet. 
or you can include pools to cross default um, that was added manually. And the um, steps are pretty similar to the basis point spread. We first uh, request a approval by date. So we'll go ahead and select date, a name of the project. And again, the same ability to upload a document if you wish. So I'll go ahead and select uh, another document and click upload. And go below and ask for a uh, request reason and fill that in. And here we have the two options, uh, one to cross default or to cross reference. For today's testing purpose, I will go ahead and select the cross default. And once you click cross default, you'll see a field opens up where we have the option to add our pool. And please note, we do have the option to add up to 11 pools to cross default. So first go ahead and click add. And you can see a couple of the fields open up. First being um, cross default pool ID. Then we have the pool type, the case number, FHA or USDA, the issue date, and the name of the project. Here you have the option to select an existing pool or a new pool that you wish to cross default for later. So I'll first go ahead and enter a new pool. And go ahead and click on the search. So here the system identified that this pool does not exist. This is a new pool. So we'll go ahead and click on add new. Once we do so, we can select the pool type and the uh, FHA case number. So I'll go ahead and paste it and then select the issue date and the name of the project. Okay, and also please note, if you do decide to remove it, you do have a trash icon to delete it. Um, second, I'll go ahead and add a existing pool um, that we have in the system. And we also have the ability to search by the case number as well. So I'll go ahead, uh, paste the case number and search. And you can see the name of the pool uh, drops down, indicating that it does exist. So I'll go ahead and click. And you can see the uh, pool type, the pool number, the issue date has been populated for us, and also um, the project name we will have to enter. And that finishes adding the pools to cross default. Um, finally, we have the third section for pre-approval for balloon payment. This pool that contains loan does have a balloon payment, so we will go ahead and select yes. Very similar to above, um, we have the request date, which is the current date. Uh, we do have to enter the request approval by date. There is a investor name section here, which is optional, so we'll go ahead and leave it blank. And finally, a document for you to upload. And I'll go ahead and click Upload. Okay, so now that the document's uploaded, um, we have finished filling out all our required fields for the three pre-approvals. So I'll go ahead and scroll up to the top and save. Um, while we wait, um, one thing to mention, um, in this scenario, we did have multiple approvals. So when you have more than one type of pre-approval, say two or all three, it'll have to be submitted together, like the way I will show in the system now, to your AE, and the AE will need to respond to all the pending requests at the same time as well. However, um, if you have uh, one type of pre-approval and it's approved, um, and you need it approved at a later time, 
you can send that pre-approval again to your AE for them to approve or reject. And another thing to add, uh, when you are creating a new pool, you do have the uh, ability um, as a part of your uh, pooling workflow and building your pool, you can do this um, for the next month as well, the um, two month in advance. All right, so now that I've covered that, I have refreshed my page um, and saved. I'll now go ahead and validate. Uh, one thing I want you to keep an eye out for uh, over here is that the new button that will appear once the pool is validated. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so like I said, you can see now um, there is a request pre-approval button. Since the pool has been validated, um, we will go ahead and click request pre-approval. Okay, and the page will refresh. As the page refresh, uh, I'd like to add, um, once the pre-approval has been submitted, you can see that the screen flashed really quickly. There is a email notification that is sent to your AE, as well as a portal notification indicating that the pre-approval has been sent uh, to your account executive. So I'll go ahead and show that. And also note there was three pre-approvals uh, that we submitted for today's demo. So we received three different notifications. On the notification, you'll have the pool number and the uh, verbiage saying that, that it has been submitted to the AE uh, for cross default, cross reference with the date and time. And the same goes for the other two pre-approval for bill and payment and basis point spread. Um, I'll now go ahead and uh, go back to the pool and loan page. And for today's demo, I did have a pool that has been uh, prepared with AE's response, um, which I will show you now. Okay, so this was already uh, approved and rejected for certain uh, fields for pre-approval. So as I scroll down, you can see that the AE uh, rejected for balloon, uh, for basis point spread uh, and for the cross default and the balloon payment, the AE did uh, approve this and you can see the status over here for cross default. And for balloon payment, you will see the pre-approval status approved. So that covers the uh, pre-approval demo. I'll now go ahead and show how to generate the waiver letters. So like before, what Jeff showed us for docu documents, we'll go ahead and click on more. And under documents, you can see we have the cost default, balloon payment, and non-loan payment provision waiver letters. So I'll click on one to show you how we generate this. So I'll go ahead and click on the balloon payment. Wait a second. The report will download and we'll go ahead and open it up. And here you can see the waiver letter. And same goes uh, for the functionality to generate these reports uh, within the pool detail page, as well as the pools and loan page, if you don't wish to go into the detail. And same option, you click on the slider, docs, and you have the option to generate the reports here as well. Okay, so that concludes the demonstration for pre-approval. Um, I'll now hand it over uh, for questioning. Um, Thank you, Tahir. If Thank anyone you. has a question or a question or 
I have a question. This Sarah is Johansson with Bonneville Mortgage Company. And I have a question. Do we have to have the account executive approval um, letter before we can certify it and before it can pass business rules or can it pass business rules while it's waiting for the approval? You, you can create the pool and save the pool, but the pool has to have the approvals first before it can pass business validation. Business validation. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And also to add to that, um, once the um, pre-approval has been approved, if you go back to the pool as, as the issuer and refresh the page, you will see those fatal um, error messages will turn into a warning, allowing you to submit the pools. Vicky Tahid, I just want to add, I mean, this was a great question. Um, so you can continue building your pool and sorting out any other fatals or issues that come up with it. However, once you want to reach that point of submitting for certification, those fatal, you need to get that approval. So it's part of your workflow, part of your as, workflow opposed to, as opposed um, to as um, opposed to something outside of the workflow. Outside of the workflow. Okay. So I have a question, like if you had a basis point spread, this is Anita Brinkman with Rose. And you didn't get approved, then how could you even continue with the loan? Like, shouldn't that be done before you finish closing the loan? You, you can create the pool in the system and upload the documentation, but the, the pre-approvals would need to come in before you can um, submit the pool for certification, yes. So if right. it were rejected, I think she's asking specifically, if it's rejected, what do you do? Well, it depends on the reason. So Vicky, you want to take this or should I proceed? But no, you can, you can proceed. Okay. So, um, so Anita, let's say um, you send it over and Jennifer or Michelle or Patrick say, no, go. There's got to be a certain reason. They have to tell you why. So they may say, we don't accept it for some reason, you need to make a correction. So you can either make whatever modification that they need, if they wanted another document, if they said your rates are wrong, something's wrong with the pool, you make the correction. And if it still needs a pre-approval, you can just resubmit it, you can modify it. So I'm not sure if Tahid covered that, but you can modify it anytime you edit, make whatever correction, you can send it back to them and get the response same day or next day, I think, um, and then proceed forward. So you can go okay. back and forth with the AE on this in the system. Um, okay. And what's nice is I think usually, I mean, there is some level of communication. I think that they ask that, for instance, um, they might leave the leave it pending without a response, but one of the AEs may call you and say, you know what, can you load this document? You can go ahead and upload the document, even if it's with them. And then they can see it and say, you know, OK, here, I'll, I'll pass it. So so there's some wiggle room in there between the AE and the and the uh, issuers. Um, and again, you can always modify it if they reject it for some reason. But I know they're going to work with you to make sure that it goes quickly. OK, thank you. I'm 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 committing on behalf of Philip's team here, but I think that's what their sentiment was as well. <laughs> I don't want to just speak for them. So, uh, Philip or anyone from the AEs, uh, did I did I cover that correctly in terms of the flow? Sure. Yeah. This is Phil. Yes, you did, and I appreciate that. And again, um, we would like to hear from folks that are using this new functionality. If it is creating a workflow problem on your end, we want to hear about that. Or if you run into any other uh, friction points, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, let us know what you think the problem is. Um, with your AE and, and certainly the Bank of New York and the new pool help desk uh, stands ready to, to iron out any kinks. Again, the last thing we want is to, to delay uh, your pooling process. So if, if that's happening, it shouldn't be, and we can work with you to, to make it right. Any other questions? Any other questions? This is Sarah Johansson with Bonneville. I have one more question. Is there like a required approval time frame we need to give our account executive? I know there's sometimes there's polls that we need it on the same day. If we could select the same day, 
Is that correct? Or would, are they required to have like two or three business days to get back on the approval? So he, do you want to show the calendar or Vicky speak out? Yeah. Yeah. So for the uh, request, you can. Um, we did allow a wiggle room. Um, and again, we follow the uh, suite process uh, for you to submit a pool. There is a time uh, cut up if you wanted that pool to be issued the following day. So you can select a date um, up to, I believe, uh, 1 59 p.m. For you to um, receive the response and um, but you should get that uh, communication with your AE from uh, ahead of time. I'm sure when you reach that stage, um, which you do require a pre approval, you will be in communication and they can give you the pre approval that day. Thank you. Okay, so they, thanks, Sarah. Um, were there any other questions on the process? Folks, if you're trying to speak and you're muted, you would just need to unmute yourself. I do want to give a chance because this is new. Um, so I'm not rushing to close the questions. Okay. Um, if anything does come up, of course, uh, you guys can email us. But uh, just to, to recap here, uh, Vicki, I know you, do you want any, anything to add before we hand it back to Lawanda? Um, then I think we covered uh, most of all the new enhancement. Again, this would make it uh, a lot easier for everyone. Um, we have a history of the approvals that's going to be stored on the system, um, and there is an audit trail. You're, in, you're able to print those uh, approval letter. Um, the system would also allow you to enter current month plus one month pooling in the system. So, for example, you can enter January, and then you can also start uh, working on your February issuance. And that way. Um, I think otherwise we covered everything else. Again, if you have any questions, you can reach us at the uh, Jenny May one uh, email address and or the customer service. Thanks. Uh, thanks, okay. Vicki. So, Luanda, we're going to hand it back to you to bring us home. Okay, thank you, Dana, and thank you, Bank of New York team, and thank you, everyone who was able to join the call. Again, this call is recorded, so we will have it available to share out with you um, so you can review it at your own leisure. And again, we appreciate the feedback that you guys have provided. It helps us with these enhancements to this existing application, and we look forward to working with you all in the future as well. Thanks again, and have a good day. Thanks, everybody. Thank hey, Dana, since, since oh, we yeah. um, ended early, this is Sylvia. Um, you got a few minutes? Yeah, let's uh, drop this bridge and yes. uh, send an invite. Thank you. Thank you.